Now we're going to practice converting between the three different types of formulas that we're going to use throughout organic chemistry. On the left, I've given you the structural formulas for a number of different hydrocarbons. And on the right, we're going to convert them into their molecular and condensed formulas. The first step in a lot of what we do in organic chemistry is to number the carbons. Here we see we have six. So in the molecular formula, it means we start out with C6. Now we count up the hydrogens. I have one, two, three on my first, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen total hydrogens. So it's C6H14. That's our molecular formula. The least informative just tells us the ratio of carbon to hydrogen in this case. The condensed formula treats all of these carbons as subunits. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth subunit. So we start out with subunit number one. That is a CH3. Second is a CH2. Followed by three more. CH2s and ending with another terminal CH3. And there you have the condensed form. Tells you a little bit more about it. I can tell by looking at this there are no branches. Uh, I see a little bit more about the structure of the molecule, but it's not nearly as bulky as the structural formula itself. Second example. Start again by numbering one, two, three, four. There are four carbons. That means it's C4. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten hydrogens for uh, molecular formula of C4H10. Subunit number one, two, three, and four. First one is CH3. Followed by two CH2s and a terminal CH3 to cap it off. The third example, a much more colorful example. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, we've got a double bond here between the three and the four card. It's not going to really make a big difference in the condensed formula, although we'll show up. You'll see that it's much easier to tell you have a double bond in the structural formula than it is in either of the other two. Okay? In these molecular and condensed formulas, you'd have to actually do math. God forbid. This is one through six, we've got C6. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, C6, H. 12. We notice we have the same number of carbons as we did in our first example, but we have less hydrogens. Okay, between C6H14, C6H12. That's because of the introduction of a double bond. That double bond now means four, two, there are four electrons shared between those two carbons where there used to be two. Two of the electrons that were shared with hydrogen are now shared between carbons. Let's treat this thing like a set of subunits, two, three, four, five, and six. First subunit is a CH3. Next subunit is a CH2. Next subunit is a CH, followed by a CH, followed by a CH2 and a CH3. It's definitely pretty clear that there's something going on in this condensed formula, but harder to tell what it is than when you just look over at the structural formula and see a double bond with your own two eyes. So you can see the benefits of each of these, how much easier it is to tell what this compound is built like, how it would look, its shape. That's the structural formula. It gives you that. The condensed and molecular, condensed gives you a little bit about the, about the shape. 
you have an idea, but definitely not as clear as the structural, and then molecular really doesn't give you a whole lot other than just like we said, that ratio of elements. Now the closed chain, which are also referred to as the aromatics, you don't have to draw these. You don't have to do condensed formulas for these. All you'd have to do is the molecular formula. If you saw one of these, you should be able to count up one, two, doesn't matter where you start, five, six. There's no functional groups on this. So there are six carbons. This, again, is another C6. We've got two hydrogens per carbon, two on each. So simple math says this is C6, H12, uh, and that's an aromatic uh, carbon ring. And this is also the aromatics are the carbon rings. Pluralize that. So, again, remember, each carbon has to have four dashes coming off it. It's structural formula. It's got to be bonded. It has to be forming four bonds. You can account for that also in the condensed formula. And uh, where it becomes more difficult is when you're trying to convert then with the molecular formula, determining the number of bonds uh, between each carbon is hardest to tell with that simple, uh, least informative molecular formula.